So with all of the anniversaries coming out this year, from 30-year anniversaries, 50-year anniversaries, 25 years, you name it, one anniversary seemingly is slipping under the radar. And you read the title below or on top, depending on how you watch the video, and yes, the anniversary that's kind of slipping under the radar a little bit is Disney's Bonkers. Now, Bonkers, as I've basically talked about many times before um, here on this channel, Bonkers originated, you know, as a part of the CBS Saturday morning Disney series Raw Tunage, which was the equivalent to a variety show that, let's say, Saturday, Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Live. Excuse me there. But yeah, that's basically what Raw Tunage was. It was the equivalent of Disney's answer to Saturday Night Live, a variety show, if you will. But it wasn't just Raw Tunage Bonkers debuted in. About a month or so before, he debuted on the big screen in a f eight minute featurette called Petals to the Metal, uh, which introduced him, Fondier, Jetters, and Grumbles to the whole world before the feature film Three Ninjas. Now, after that, like I said, Pedal, Pedals to the Metal was inserted as part of the series of Bonkers shorts that was on Raw Tunage under the segment called He's Bonkers. Now, Bonkers did graduate like, let's say, Masupalami did and so on. Um, they, he did graduate into his own series. And his own series was given a sneak peek in the spring of 1993. Yes, that basically means in a couple of months, Bonkers 30th anniversary will be official. But here's why it's the here's why that's the case. Here's why that's the case. You see, you know, Disney at the time and even before then, and I think a little afterwards, would use the spring and the summer of that year, the year that the show that they were planning for syndication, Saturday mornings, and even Disney afternoon, they would use the spring and summer of that year to give people a sneak peek on the Disney Channel of what was to come. Now, this was also at a time where Disney Channel was still looked at as a, prime, as a premium channel. In other words, you had to pay for it to be part of your package, just like you would do with HBO, Showtime, and Cinemax, and so on, even up to the day. Disney, though, no longer does that, so we don't have to worry. However, like I said, back then, though, even with Bonkers being given a sneak peek to a lot of people, you had to still pay a premium price to add it. And giving sneak peeks to upcoming shows like Bonkers, and even before then, Dark Green Duck, Goof Troop, Rescue Rangers, Tailspin, and so on, and even the original DuckTales, that was basically one of the perks that Disney would entice you with to add the channel onto your cable system, which many did. But what was interesting about the sneak peek of Bonkers in the spring of 1993 is it was not the Bonkers that people would see later on in the fall. You see, the sneak peek people got with Bonkers in 93 had a different intro. That's true, it had a different intro. And it was mostly consisting of the Miranda Wright episodes. The Miranda Wright episodes where she was Bonkers' partner and not Lucky Pacal as we saw later on. But, as I've mentioned many times before, historically, and this is documented, apparently some behind-the-scenes issues with the animation overseas caused basically 19 to 20 of the Miranda Wright episodes to be salvaged and the rest to be discarded. Well, not totally discarded, but let's just put, say be put into one of the Disney vaults never to be seen again. I think it's the kind of vault to where, yeah, you only see something once, or you hear about it, or you know it exists, but because it doesn't meet certain standards, it gets locked away, never to see the light of day. And that's basically what happened, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically what, with what happened, I should say, with about 65 or 61 of the Miranda, not, not 61, but basically that's what happened with essentially the 40, 40 to 41 episodes you know, that remained featuring Miranda and Bonkers as a team. So what did they do? 
Well, basically, they had to take out the team, team you know, led by Doreen Capiza, you know, that did the Miranda episodes. They had to take them out of the equation and put Larry Lantham and his team, you know, in their place. And thus, by putting them in their place, along with Robert Taylor, they were able to create not only new episodes for Bonkers, giving Bonkers a new kind of look similar you know, kind of identical to his uh, look that everybody knew, but different. But also give him a new partner and base their part of the show, their, you know, their, uh, I guess you could say, uh, contribution to the series, base it off inspiration they took from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's right. A lot of people have always said that Bonkers is basically Disney's equivalent or answer to not getting Roger Rabbit. Well, technically that is true. He is that answer. He is that answer in all spades. But the difference uh, between the two is Bonkers lost his job. Roger didn't. You know, Bonkers got a job as a cop. Roger didn't. So there are some major differences, no doubt. There are some major differences, if not similarities. The point is, though, because of the disastrous behind-the-scenes issue, like I said, Animation Rise, with the 40 other plus Miranda episodes, they had to not only bring in this new team, but by doing so, this new team actually came up with an origin story. That's right. If there was one thing that I believe Larry Lantham, Robert Taylor, and their team looked at when, you know, basically being told, hey, we need you to come in and do, you know, kind of a revamp, a reboot of this series, and these are the only other episodes we have in existence that we do want to show, but we need something to basically meet the quota of 65, you know, that being 65 episodes in syndication, you know, Robert Taylor and Larry Lantham and the crew looked at the fact that, like, wait a minute, how does Bonkers go from being this cartoon character, a raw tunage, kind of an actor, if you will, to being a cop? How does that happen? There's no explanation. So they came up with an origin story for Bonkers to become a cop. Basically, the origin story, if you don't know it by now, goes like this. Bonkers He's looked at as the top, one of the top, if not the top, cartoon character in Hollywood, if not the world, along with his friends. And just because a rival studio's newest show that's all action and adventure and everything tops Wacky Toon Studios and the Bonkers shorts, you know, or the Bonkers franchise, if you will, series of franchise, episodes, shorts, movies, whatever, just because a rival studio's uh, new uh, property tops Wacky Toon Studios and the Bonkers series, the head, the head up of Wacky Toon Studios says, uh uh, that ain't gonna happen. Bonkers has got to go because basically he wants to go with what is the trend, what is the popular trend, and that's action and adventure. And what's interesting, though, about this is one of the episodes that was part of the Miranda episodes, which was called Tokyo Bonkers, actually kind of plays into, I think, why this origin story was made. Because Bonkers basically tells uh, the antagonist in the episode, Z-Bot, while Z-Bot is still in the capture, um, that basically he was replaced by, you know, biceps, the Biceps Bill show or something like that. And to me, I think when they would rewatch the episodes to kind of get ideas of what to carry over, what to utilize, and everything, they probably looked at that, heard that line, and they're like, we can use that. And they did. And that's why you had Biceps Bill, you know, make an appearance in the pilot episode as the show that was going to replace Bonkers and his friends. But yeah, they came up with an origin story, which was one of the best origin stories I've seen, whether you like the show or you don't, and one of the darker origin stories, one of the darker pilots, believe it or not, that Disney has ever done for a Disney afternoon show. Now, on top of that, though, despite, you know, churning out, you know, newer episodes with Lucky Pacquiao, who is basically the Eddie Valiant, you know, of the, of these episodes, the Lucky Pacquiao episodes, as people would call them, or the Lucky Pacquiao era, as people look at it, even though they were churning out episodes after episodes after episodes, after episodes which are, which could be looked at as good, bad, and in between, depending on your taste, they also knew that they had to answer the one 
big question that they knew fans would be wondering. How did Bonkers go from Lucky Pakel to Miranda Wright? Because, again, for those that saw the original sneak peek on Disney Channel, they saw Miranda Wright. So for, so for them to see Bonkers with another partner, you know, that was given to him as part of an origin story of how he became a cop, obviously the team behind the Lucky episode, that being Robert Taylor, Larry Latham, and all, and all them, realized... We need to come up with an episode that kind of explains that. That kind of like, you know, you know, kind of transitions Bonkers over from Lucky to Miranda. Thus, in my opinion, what they probably did, and they got Disney's consent to do it, is they brought back Dwayne Capiza. They brought back his team as well to help them out with the episode New Partners on the Block. And by helping them out... In, in my opinion, kind of supervising them on what to do, you know, we ended up getting probably what I consider one of the best sequel episodes to a pilot, one of the best mid-season finales to a pilot, and one of the best transitional episodes in a series in a long time. Because not only did you get to see Lucky and Miranda on screen together for the first and only time ever, but you got the return of all the characters that you saw in the pilot that you know of being associated with Bonkers. The other thing, too, as I've pointed out, is you had basically the same animation team. You had the same animation team, you know, you know, you know, come back, you know, to help um, animate, you know, the episode. And we're not just talking, you know, drawing the characters, coloring them in, color, you know, drawing and coloring up the backgrounds and all that. No. We're talking bringing back, at the time, what was considered uh, CGI uh, rain, very early CGI rain, the kind of rain that you would only see, like, let's say, in the early stages of Disney classic films and all that. They brought that back to kind of add to the atmosphere. And also, just like with, you know, Going Bonkers, the two-part pilot, you know, whether you saw that uncut or you didn't, you get this episode was given a very dark tone to kind of complement it. And that I thought that was really good. I thought that was really good because you want to kind of, like I said, you want to kind of do something that's going to not only, you know, I guess you could say serve as a, a transitional mid-season finale, you know, for the series, you know, that's, you know, when the next portion, like the second half debuts, it's totally different and all that, like we would see, but you want to do it in a way that plays homage, if you will, to the first ep- to the pilot. You want to give it that same kind of tone before saying, hey, look at these next episodes, they're more bright and colorful, and that's what the Miranda Bonkers episodes ended up being. But yeah, Bonkers went through a tremendous behind-the-scenes history when it came to his series becoming a reality. I mean, again, a lot of folks thought that you know, basically, they were going to get, by watching the sneak peek on Disney Channel, they thought they were going to get Bonkers and Miranda. That's what they thought. That's what they thought they were going to get. But then, out of the blue, they ended up getting something different, only to have maybe those questions answered of what happened here, you know, you know basically given to them in mid-October of 1993. Now, Speaking of new partners on the block, and I've talked about this before too, and I'm sure everybody's aware of it, it, along with another Barker's episode called Fall Apart Bomb Squad, and other episodes um, like um, one from Tailspin, which is called Flying Dupes, and I think even one of the Rescue Ranger episodes and every, you know, and all that, I think it's where Monterey Jack's mom comes to visit and everything. Uh, But basically, a lot of episodes after the 1995 Oklahoma City bombings and later on the 2001-9-11 situation, a lot of these episodes ended up being removed. Some of them, after the 1995 bombings, got removed almost immediately. Some survived. Some survived, but wouldn't be removed until after 9-11. 
And the reason for that is because of the sensitivity, you know, that was the sensitivity topic and issue that the episode was dealing with or was about. And these episodes would not be seen again, you know, in the entirely, in the entirety, if you will, until Disney Plus. Now, I was fortunate enough to, you know, ask about, about, ask around and about about new partners and was able to get an answer to the point that somebody sent me their actual, and I've said this before, um, actual VHS tape, you know, to, you know, record through my DVD recorder new partners on the block. They sent me the actual tape. They did that. They did that. They sent me the actual tape. And on top of that, I think somebody sent me or somebody directed me to a place where I could find and did potentially get the uncut version of the Going Barkers pilot. Yeah. So I was able to get both of those uh, like within the past decade or so. And I'm very grateful for that. But what's interesting, but again, like I said, what's interesting is they would not be seen publicly until Disney Plus debuted. Now, you might say, well, how can Disney Plus get away with it? It's the same reason HBO Max and Paramount and Peacock and all of them with a stream that are a streaming service under a bigger banner, under a bigger corporation. It's the same reason even Netflix and Amazon Prime and MGM Plus and all of them could get away with it. It's because of the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that they have warnings right before you watch the episodes. Like when you go to the episode, they have a warning telling you that there are certain things in said episode that could be looked at as being very sensitive. Heck, they even talk about there, are, there is certain usage of tobacco and alcohol and all that in these episodes or movies so that people will be aware of, okay... You know, when we watch this, you know, if we're sensitive to it, we can just ignore it or rewind, you know, or move on, you know, from this, you know, those episodes, from those scenes in the movie or scenes in the episodes or whatever, or even avoid the the episode in itself if we feel like it. That's why they're able to get away with it. That's why they're able to get away with it, because they're able because they put those warnings you know, up there before anybody watches an episode or a movie. That's why they're able to get away with it. So now if you ever want to watch, you know, New Partners on the Block and get that answer of how Bonkers went from Lucky to Miranda, you could do so on Disney+. Plus. The only unfortunate thing is you don't get the uncut version of Bonkers, or the Going Bonkers pilot, I should say. You just get it in two parts. Hopefully that will be remedied in the near future. But yeah... But yeah, looking back on it, 30 years later, on, his, on the 30th anniversary of this show, of this character, you know, it, it's amazing to think of all the behind-the-scenes situations that, you know, the show itself went through just to become what it is. I mean, going back to the whole, you know, disastrous behind-the-scenes issues with the with only 19 to 20 of the Miranda episodes uh, surviving, and the fact that they had to bring in another team to fill that gap, if you will, here's what they here's what also people don't realize. Now, like I said, they had a quota to meet of 65 episodes in syndication. So you have, so if you have basically 20, let's say, let's say uh, basically. 19 to 20 episodes of Miranda, most people would say it's 19, then to fill that quota of 65, you need, to fill that quota of 65, you need, you know, essentially 44, uh, 40, what is it, 46 more episodes, I believe, to hit that quota, you need like 40, uh, 44, what is it, uh, If it was 20 and 45 would be 65, right? So 19, yeah, about 46 more episodes, right? Well, what they did, from what I understand, is they ended up not only doing, I think, about 42 lucky episodes, but they also, 
and correct me if I'm wrong, they also basically used all the bonk, he's bonkers shorts from the Raw Tunage series and placed them together in, compl- in, four, in four episodic compilations, along with some new footage to go along with it. So yeah, basically to you know kind of meet the quota, not only did they have to bring in that new team that I mentioned to do the Lucky episodes, which was about, I would say, 40, 41 of them, I believe, to, to kind of meet a quota, if you will, about 41. But they also had to utilize four, four, if you will, of the Bonkers episodes. You know, they had to use four of the Bonkers episodes, not Bonkers episodes, but they had to use four episodes, basically, and somebody's just running the car outside. They, We have neighbors that, like, you know, just love cars and like to run them real loud, I guess, for attention or something. But anyway, that's why I got a little distracted. I do apologize. But anyway, like I said, you know, uh, basically they had to use four episodes you know, as complimentation episodes for the He's Bonkers uh, cartoons that were on Raw Tunage, including the theatrical featurette Pedals to the Metal, which introduced the world to the characters in the first place. So you might say, well, 1992 is the official uh, anniversary. 2022 was the official anniversary of the characters themselves. That's true. But the show that was part of the Disney Afternoon is 30 years old to, you know, this year. That's what I'm getting at. Yes, the characters themselves are over 30 years old. The series, which they would star in in 1993, celebrates 30 years this year. And that's an amazing uh, 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 accomplishment is what I'm looking for. That's an amazing um, accomplishment. Because, again, Bonkers is one of those shows that kind of goes under the radar. It goes under the radar a little bit. It's over time gotten a cult following. People have come to really appreciate it. I mean, yeah, people would look at it as the show that got rid of Rescue Rangers on the Disney Afternoon. But I think everybody has to realize that the way the Disney Afternoon was operating at that time from a rotation standpoint, that was going to happen anyway. You know, that was going to happen anyway. And despite how you feel about it being a Roger Rabbit, Roger Rabbit ripoff or Disney's answer to Roger Rabbit or Roger Rabbit inspired, it definitely was able to hold its own. And to me, I thought it was a good show. I really did. I thought it was a good show. I, I enjoyed what they did with the characters. And like I've said in recent videos at, um, as of late last year, you know, I could, you know, I could look at a character like, like, like let's say, Fawn Deer. I could look at a character like Fawn Deer, and I could see her if a reboot, if Disney wanted to go the re, down the reboot uh, rabbit hole, if you will, with Bonkers, like they've done with the DuckTales series, like they're planning to do with Tailspin, and we'll touch upon that soon. And what they did with the Rescue Angel movie, with with a sequel potentially coming and maybe a new series down the line, if they wanted to go down that same rabbit hole with Bonkers, then I could see a character like Fondir, as I mentioned in an audio video late last year, I could see her doing a lot more in the reboot, you know, than she did in the original, and that's a fact. I really can. I could really see that. But. In closing, guys, I don't want this to go any longer than what it is. In closing, I want to say that basically, you know, if you haven't really given the show a chance, if you have Disney+, Plus, check it out. You'll, you'll basically, in my opinion, enjoy what you see. You will thoroughly enjoy it. You know, to me, there is, um, like I said, you know, nothing, in my opinion, really wrong with it. And... Again, if you want more information, there's a ton of information from a behind-the-scenes per, uh, perspective that you can find online about it. But overall, overall, um, I, I would suggest enjoy. I would suggest checking it out if you haven't had that opportunity, because there are some good things in there. I think you will enjoy. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to come on here, do this. 
you know, a little audio video, which will also be a podcast uh, at my BW Roses, uh, BW Roses Discussions podcast um, series, which you can find on all your favorite audio podcast locations except for Pandora. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come on here, do this video. Uh, give my thoughts on it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below. Like chat during the premiere. Like the video. Oh, also support me at my Teespring store for merchandise you can't get anywhere else except there. Also support me at Venmo at Brian Dash Walmart Dash Two. Cash App at BW Roses ninety eight. Patreon at BW Roses the one dollar three dollar tier. Also, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, check me out at divanart.com, says BVW1979, and Vimo at BW Roses for content you can't get here on YouTube. But guys, until next time, let me know what your thoughts are overall uh, on what I had to say here. What are your memories of Bonkers 30 years later? How did you feel about, you know, the, I guess you could say the confusing state that it was in? Like when you first saw it, sneak, you know, given a sneak peek on Disney Channel and then what you got with syndication. What were your thoughts on that? What were your thoughts on new partners and all that? Just give me your thoughts overall in the live chat, in the comments. And until next time, guys, I'm out.